Okay, everybody, welcome back to A Dude in the Hen House. I'm the dude, Fred Carroll. Got Mel, who's the hen. And today I got my new friend, Marcy Cozen. Hi. Cozen, cousin, cozen. Cozen, cozen. Cozen, cozen. So cozen. a lot of people, a lot of people often ask, like, who exactly is Marcy? Marcy Cozen? <laughs> who is Marcy Cozen? So my amazing research skills, here they are. And analysis. Oh, I, I learned that she is a comedian. I learned that she is in real estate. And I learned that she makes a mean potato latke or whatever the hell you say it. Is this true? <laughs> Thank you, Google. <laughs> did, I, did I say lot? How do you say the word? The latka, you found an article I wrote years ago for a paper. Okay, I found a latka, and I'm going to include her recipe in the show notes of her two pounds of potatoes, her one onion, her two eggs, her salt, pepper, her matzo meal, or flour. Use matzo meal if you're going to be a real Jew, be a real Jew. Baking powder, and she's going to teach you, this is who Marcy is. <laughs> is this all true? So far? That is very true. Yes. You found some old information on me. I I did put a recipe in a paper for a good potato latka for Hanukkah many years ago. And I understand you are one of these um not very religious type. Correct. Jews. Not right. Not very religious. But I'm also a mortgage broker. I'm a mortgage broker before I was a realtor. Realtor, mortgage broker, you are just you. You are a Jew. You basically <laughs> you are, or Jamaican, one or the other, because Jamaicans have a lot of jobs. So, <laughs> so here's a question I have for you. Let's go right into this. I won't even let Mel talk yet. Mel will talk in a minute. But okay. we have a shit ton of friends that are involved in the real estate business. A shit ton, okay. and they're they're everywhere. Most are successful. Mm -hmm. One of my friends is amazingly successful. She is selling about three, one house every three days for the last five years. So extremely successful. Wow. I mean, out of the water successful. And believe me, she lives it. Um, how are all of them Connecticut Shoreline's number one realtor? That's what, who the fuck gives these awards? <laughs> every real estate agent is number one in something. Who's giving these awards? Public relation firms. <laughs> okay. Because I, it's so out of control. I, I just imagine it's dumbed down to like number one realtor before noon on a Wednesday. You know, it's just what qualifies you for this? Because all my friends are posted as Connecticut Shoreline number one realtor. It, it, I don't get it. I don't get the whole business of it or the mortgage rates. <laughs> I don't get it at all. I don't get it either. I'm not, I'm number one realtor in this office right now. This office right here. Number yeah, one. You're by yourself. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're always, done. you're also the last. You're the worst. You're the best and the worst. The best and the worst right here in this office. So I met you, I met you through our friend, Jeff Dwoskin. Correct. Who I find to be an amazing guy. I don't know about you. I'm sure when we turn off the camera, you'll tell me the truth. <laughs> Jeff's a great guy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Jeff's a great guy. We'll we'll Correct. say that on the air. We'll say that because Correct. it's good for his marketing. Yeah. Great for his ego. He's such an egomaniac. Mm -hmm. Just it's a, and his name dropping ability. That's what I find him famous for. He loves to name drop. <laughs> he is a name dropper. So we'll drop his name, Jeff Dwoskin. You can catch him on classic conversations. And then you could catch Marcy, who's also a co-host with him on what is the name of that show? Crossing the Streams. I'm on it all the time. Man. Crossing the Streams. Crossing the Streams. Crossing yeah. the Streams, which is where I met Marcy. So now that everybody's caught up, good night. Because <laughs> that's all the entertainment we're going to give you. Mel, you got any questions for her? You want to learn uh, anything about Marcy? No, no, I think I'm good. Other than why are the mortgage rates so high? I yeah. mean. <laughs> she is a mother. You are a parent, right, Marcy? I am a parent. I have two boys named Chi, and 20. Cheech and Chong, right? Oh, gosh. See, yes, I'm paying yes, attention. You... <laughs> I pay attention. I went back and watched Marcy's first ever comedy routine 
on YouTube from 2010. What'd you think? For was, my first. Well, first of all, of course, we could analyze the hell out of it if we wanted to. But your confidence, your confidence was there. Mm, and okay. I, I know, I don't know because I've never done it, but I assume that's a major thing. Most people come on very nervous. Mm -hmm. You were very prepared for a people not to just in case they didn't laugh at something. Right. You had a deflection to that. I'll analyze the hell out of this if you really want me. No. To. The, three, the three pound baby always. Uh, oh, yeah. People yeah. didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. You, so, know, you yeah. know, whenever you talk about um, mothers that smoke cigarettes and while pregnant and stuff, it, it's going to get dicey. But listen, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of finding that line, yeah. stepping the fuck over it and smashing it and just make people uncomfortable. And that's yeah. what you did. You managed, you managed. Oh. So funny. I love so, how you watch that. So as a, um, <laughs> as a mother to two, how old are they now? How old are so, you? 18 and 20. 18 and 20. Most people say 20 and 18, don't they? Or do they say, do you start with the lower or the higher? I guess you start with the favorite. So whoever's listening, the 18 year old, you win. <laughs> You know, it, the 18 year old totally agrees. He's like, yeah, yeah, that, me about her. <laughs> so you guys are both Mel also is a mother of two boys, similar, okay. similar ages too. 15 and 20. Yeah. Oh, 15 wow. and 20. See? And 20 that, and 15. Sorry. Right. <laughs> no I'm, favoritism. I'm the empty nester. I already bore and raised my children. I didn't actually bore them. Do, do, no. well, I do bore them on a daily basis, <laughs> apparently. But my my youngest is, how old is my youngest? 23, 23. So my youngest is 23. So I'm the only one with a girl, which is so fucking unfair. One this, girl? Um, two girls. I got two girls. Two girls and a boy. And I mean, you could say I hit the jackpot all together. I got two girls and a gay son. I mean, I've got it all. So, you know, I didn't have a clean gay son. I don't know if you're familiar with any of this. Do you deal with, um, have you, have you had to, do you have any friends who have gay children or any, yes. you know? Okay. So my son is a fucking slob wow. and he listens. He's not what I would call that. A lot of people like that prototypical um, when they, when somebody's gay, they think they're good dressers they think they're my son is so manly in his disgusting habits he is fucking gross he moved out 10 years ago and i still find blue bowls under his bed it's <laughs> he, and you guys have sons are your sons do you have one son that is particularly clean and one that's particularly not or anything different about him yes yeah it's I my sons are very, very different and yeah, very different and very similar, but yeah, one of them is a total slob and the other one is a, a lot cleaner. Like my oldest son can fold a towel, like origami. I mean, <laughs> once I learned how well he could fold, like in the army, I'm like, you have to fold all the towels forever and all of his shirts, everything just so neat. And then the younger kid rolls everything up in a ball and throws throws it on the shelf just yeah i'm that, lucky if it gets off the floor out of a laundry basket yeah and i get i get hammered by my my daughter is the only active uh, i'll call her the active child in my life the one that still checks in on me to make sure i'm breathing mm -hmm. even though i'm very convinced she checks in to see if her inheritance has gone through <laughs> yeah, basically to see if i died but it's she makes it sound like I'm such a horrible, messy, disgusting dad. You know, she, she overshoots on, on what I'm doing. For some reason, she's ultra focused on this and she loves to tell girls I date. She loves to, and I think she's trying to drive them away. Now, both of you are single, I assume. Yes. I, I assume, I, I assume Mel didn't find a boyfriend in the last five days that I talked to her. No, thank you, Fred, for pointing that out. Thanks. Okay, so let's talk about some of this bullshit, the dating world, because it's utter 
it's a it's a fucking disaster if i i think so at least so i want to hear it from your point of views marcy may i ask how old you are or is that uh, no no i i'm 52 okay so i'm, 52. Uh, I'm the oldest the again i'm still the oldest this sucks <laughs> <laughs> sucks um i'm actually currently married though i'm my b- divorce is not final yet so oh okay yeah we're yeah that's fun huh divorce that's that's a joke. I mean, it's it's different. <laughs> so, you know, I in the mortgage business, I've read so many divorce judgments. I, you know, might as well have my own to read. Yeah, it's great. It's mm-hmm. it's good as long as it's something you want. That's exactly, great. Yeah, Mar- Oh, I forgot to mention that Marcy is a huge fan of the movie Reptile. So, oh, anybody gosh. out there that has Netflix, go on Netflix and watch Reptile. Marcy gives it five stars, and. I want to tell her I did watch it for a fourth time. That's insane. Why would you do that? <laughs> a fourth time. I, I had to study the dialogue this time. And it still sucks. It's a, it's a horrible, boring. I don't understand. You're not literally just sitting there. Are you doing other things while you have it on? You want to hear how boring I am? I'm right. watching. I'm watching it intently and taking notes. Wow. <laughs> what a loser. And you're dating somebody. So yeah, that's not too much about you. <laughs> and I found somebody and she likes me for me. I feel bad for her. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of people feel bad for her, but including me. But so <laughs> so you did mention you tec- technically you're married. Correct. Um so have not ventured back into that world yet. Right. I mean, kind yeah. of, you know, yeah. 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 you know, I'm looking. <laughs> it's not fun. Now, do you have an age range? Because we talked about this last week. What is your age range? Because you, you know, being an attractive woman, being a comedian, being a mortgage broker, all those things. What is your age range? OK, so for looking purposes, my age range is 30 to 62. OK. I mean, it's like <laughs> any other yeah. like online shopping, it gives you, you know, I compare this online dating thing to shoes, just scrolling yes, through catalog, catalog yep. shopping. What? Yep. <laughs> I could have a, you know, I could order something and have a 35 year old guy over and, you know, within a couple hours, I get, you know, it's like kind of feels like that. Not that I've done that, but I do have the age set up from 30 to 62. Really, And I do, um, I would prefer, I do like men my own age. Seriously. I mean, I, you know, that's a girl thing. That's such a girl thing because Mel's the same way. Mel, Mel has got herself cornered in this, I believe 46 to 55 range. Yep. I pay attention. I'm listening. I I don't, I don't enjoy listening, but I, I listen, (laughs) but 46 to 55 Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. prefers closer to her own age. And then she has all the, all these emotional values and all this. Oh, it's so draining. It's so fucking draining. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I have morals. I can't just go and (laughs) be a a cougar. Every woman has morals, but I've been with women since I was 13 or 14 None of you had fucking morals back then either. I mean, your morals went out the window to minish the. I figured out how to get into the Jordache jeans. It, <laughs> all the morals went away. You know, it, it. I have morals. I have subtle morals. Okay, but Fred, because back in the day, we didn't know what ding dongs you boys were until we lost our morals for a split second and was like, okay, never mind. It's, it is a challenge. It's a challenge, but the dating world itself. So I see a shit show and I'm not even in it any, any longer, but when I was in it, it's, it is a challenge for you to find partners. Uh, now 30 to 62, you should be fucking that door oh should God. be open closed open closed, it's, open closed it's very broad it's very broad uh, and i i salute you i salute you it's so funny i'm like it's if I, literally if i'm having a conversation with like a 31 year old it's i'm it's i'm just 
I can't take it seriously. I'm so motherly. Don't forget to take a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a mother. You it's become a, motherly. Like... You, it's like that's like me at a when I'm at a strip bar or something. I'm like, oh, she's gonna catch a cold. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, I'm sure. There's a chill coming in the back right. door. Right. You know, oh, she shouldn't be doing cocaine. Or okay, worse, so good for you. Or worse, they tell you the year that they were born, and you're like, oh, Jesus, I was already out of high school by then. Yeah, yeah that's. Mm. I, I can't. That's the one I, I can't. Or they don't know if you're talking about certain music from back in the 70s or 80s. And they're like, oh, I never heard of Led Zeppelin oh, before. All the uh, bands that they listen to. Yes. Are on, and I'm like, I've, um, I've never heard of any of that. I don't know. Does anyone still listen to Bob Seger? It <laughs> never says Bob Seger. Or when Where's you're, Fleetwood Mac? <laughs> when you show them a song, you show them a song and they go, oh, I think my mom has that album. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a, yeah, a lot of jokes about about the parents. I'm like, you know, because you know these 30 year olds, they they are interested in 50 year old women. I will say, cool. and I yeah, total coup. But it, it, I literally, I, I, I do have a lot to say about this. But I'm just like, I was talking to my mom recently. I'm like, these 30 year old guys are really interested in 50 year old women. I'm like. Like, should I have their parents, like, maybe sign, like, a permission <laughs> slip before, like, we actually go out? Like, I don't want any trouble. Do I know? Do I know their parents? Right. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm like, so how old's your mom? You know, where'd she go to college? Do I know her? Do I know your dad? What is your dad? Like, maybe I should talk to your dad. <laughs> yeah, it's a, they go. <laughs> it definitely could cause a little thing. But I know, I understand on a more serious level why these 30-year-olds want a 50 year old plus woman. Mm -hmm. First of all, the experience, you cannot, you cannot teach experience. First of all, you can't teach experience, whether it's sexual or just relationship wise, you can't teach that stuff. You learn it. And that's where we all are at this point where we got a, sometimes it's a false confidence, but it's a confidence. We know what we could, we know what we could do and we know what we're supposed to do. We know the goal now because I didn't know the goal until I was probably in my 20s. I still thought you just jumped in and went 100 miles an hour. And that was what you were supposed to do. I didn't know you guys had emotions and feelings and we needed <laughs> to titillate your mind as much as we did with your body. I didn't understand that because my penis didn't want to hear me. It didn't have ears. It didn't listen. And I needed... I needed sex. That's what it was. It was just. Wait, Fred, do you think that your penis actually listens now? <laughs> if, it is, if it if it does, it's not listening very well because no. it's getting more. It, it's it's like my dog, my old dog now, kind of just ignores me whenever <laughs> I want to talk to it or or get it to perform. I have to really. I really have to be involved here and 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 work, and work the situation. But those 50 year old women when you're 30 will absolutely blow your mind. You could ruin a 30 year old at that point in their stamina. The stamina a 30 year old has is insane. So I'm not going out with these 30 no, year olds. No, it's no. just but I want to talk about something that happened recently when I ran into a cousin of mine who um, was with a friend of his, I know her, she's 30. And they um, asked me about, you know, getting divorced and how's it going. And I, you know, I would mention being on a dating site and they said, how's it going? And I said, well, I'm killing it with the 31 to 38 year olds. And I was laughing because I was kind of kidding, but really I, I, I do have a lot of, a lot of likes from these young guys. And she was very angry and let me know it on how appalled she was. And I couldn't, she was scolding me. And I'm like, why are you so mad at me? And she said, because I'm 30. And I know that my, the guys that I should be dating all want to fuck 50 year old women. How am I going to meet someone? And I'm like, well, you should be nice to me because I'm going to go out with them and I'll put a good word in for you when I'm done with them. <laughs> Don't yell at me. Be nice to me. Well, and it's, I mean, like, but she was pissed and I obviously it's a huge problem. I'm sure it is because I've got to imagine with 
even with my daughter, you know, I'm, I speak enough open about her and does she like it? Who gives a shit? Is this the blonde that had a birthday recently? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. girl. Well, and that was my point. So she was, of course she was beautiful at 17 and 16. So the boys that, and I was a single dad, the boys that were rolling up my driveway, it was plentiful, you know, it was, <laughs> it, it was plentiful is the word, you know, and I have to imagine if she's pretty open with me, but she doesn't talk about this and she's in a long-term relationship, but she must get hammered on this Instagram stuff because she's all over Instagram. The, the messages she receives has to be, I'm going to check. I'm going to see if I could, because I technically own her phone, right? If I pay for it, can't I legally go into it and check her messages? That should be a law. I think. Oh, I mean, you're going to need her password, but. Oh, I'll, I bet you it's my dad's awesome one, two, three or something like that. <laughs> that's, that's probably exactly what it is. Yeah, <laughs> I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Maybe it's my dad's crossing a line. One, two, three. <laughs> it's, pro it's probably my credit card number with the three digit thing at the end. Because <laughs> that's one thing she's clearly memorized. <laughs> so I had no problem with that. But, Marcy, I have a question for you. Uh -oh. yeah. When you go out on dates and you tell them you're a comedian, do they think it's cool or do they fear that you're going to talk about them? On Both. And I don't, oh, I don't, I, you know, I don't really say it a lot, but uh, a couple, once someone said, don't talk about me. And um, I think usually it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, but. Yeah, I don't really talk about it that much. Do they want um, you to tell them jokes? Are they like dance, I, you know, monkey dance? Yeah, I hate that. You know, I, I, everyone always does that. Oh, tell me a joke. I'm not going to tell you a joke. But um, yeah, I um, I've sent a clip a couple. You know, a couple times I've like sent a clip. I've got a pretty good clip that I make fun of uh, dad bods that I'm pretty proud of, and um, you know, it's a it's a good one that I've sent. If someone's like, you know. Can I see a little bit of it? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I got a little clip that I did at a good comedy uh, place here in Michigan. And I think that, uh, that I'll it send you my well. email. I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to assume I'm in this dating world of the dad bod. <laughs> the now, dad bod is such bullshit. Now that I've been sitting back listening to you, I it's come to my mind now that my research must have been swayed by your name changes. Is is that true? If I searched by your married name, would mm -hmm. I find more than probably maybe you might? Yeah, so probably. That's great for anybody getting a divorce that's in the entertainment industry. You have to go back and change that. You got to create the algorithm now. Yeah. The new name so you people can find you. Yeah, I don't really, I don't need anyone fighting. Or they're going to learn about your son's Cheech and Chong, one or the other. Oh my gosh, that is such, that was, that was one of my favorite jokes. I mean, I literally have a couple of people in my life who are like, that Cheech and Chong joke, that's my favorite joke. I'm like, really? <laughs> but that was. Uh, I thought know. you were very, I mean, I don't know how much, was this just a whim thing or is it something you always wanted to do? Be a the com comedy? Yeah. So it was Jeff Dawaskin. Um, Jeff and I, I've known Jeff for many years. So Jeff and I worked at a summer camp together and we ended up at this, we ended up at the same college. I knew Jeff very well and we were both hilarious. I thought Jeff was really, really funny. And I found out he started doing comedy and I was so jealous. I wish he would have told me and I would could have done it with him, but I don't really think we had stayed in touch and um, there's just this really cool uh, comedy place that puts on classes and he did it and he did it. He actually went out and really became like a professional comedian. Um, I ended up doing the class many years after him, but I didn't do it as much. I did not become a professional comedian. I was not really putting on shows like he was. I never really did. Um, I never got great at it. I never put the time into it. But when my business slows down, I always see myself getting back on stage, which is usually around October, November, 
as a realtor, when it gets real cold in Michigan, that's when my business slows down. And I'll probably get back on stage before the end of the year. Yeah. It, I've never seen Jeff as a um, comedian, obviously. Okay. I, I've never even met him in person. And I was trying to explain to Mel that I actually consider him one of my best friends. That's great. And I've never even met him, never met him. And that goes with Ron also, who I think is just an amazing man. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we can give props to Mr. Lippet. Yep. And, you know, on a personal level, he, we, we had spoke last week about how I was fired from my job last week. Oh, from I'm so my sorry. Full-time job. So we, we ended up calling out a few people and having a little fun with this because I was fired for stupid, stupid reason. What was your job? I was a supervisor at a, in, we'll call it retail, in the retail business. I was a okay. supervisor and I did overnights. So I did the stocking and stuff like that, but I was okay. the supervisor and I was let go for when the vending machines were down in July and the AC is off. So it's very hot. I took four waters out of the cooler and never completed the process. And I cost the company $18 and 55 cents because I didn't bill it out right. properly. And they fired me for that. You know, so I called, I inadvertently, this will be my only time I talk about this, but I called somebody out last week on the show and I got to take it back. I got to retract it. You do? Yeah. I have to retract mentioning Jimmy on the show uh, because Jimmy wasn't part of this procedure. He was completely blindsided by it, according to him. And I'm taking his word for it. Completely blindsided by it and had no power to stop it once it got rolling. But the person was, was this guy named Casey. This guy named Casey, who is in charge of the department that investigates um, fraud and thefts and all the stuff that goes in the store. He took this upon himself and he's the one that got this rolling without permission from above him. So let's switch the blame from one to the other and roll mm -hmm. with it from there. And they still got me held up. They are holding me hostage almost. And they still haven't reached out to me technically and fired me technically. But yet the state of Connecticut tells me they fired me on the second, on October 2nd, but nobody said a word to me yet. So, <laughs> so you really don't even know that you're fired. No, I, mean, you are, but... I am terminated. They have terminated me because you know how you can tell? When you go to the dentist and your insurance doesn't work, when, yeah. oh. when your medical is removed, you've been fired. And when you get Cobra papers in the in the mail, you know, when it says, hey, now you can pay eight hundred dollars a month for shitty insurance. Right. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. But who cares? It's still a blessing in disguise because now I get to talk to two beautiful women during the day <laughs> instead of go to work. Oh, I didn't mean you guys. <laughs> I just I got the prostitutes I hired on that are on their way. But okay, so let's move into something else. What else can we let's create a scenario here? Give me a scenario, or if you guys want to ask me a question from a guy's perspective to get a guy's perspective on something. I can... actually wanted to ask Marcy one more question. Go ahead. Yes. During during your in your divorce process, are you still living with your soon to be ex-husband? <laughs> oh man. It's a great question. How'd you know? <laughs> so um we do live together. However, I spend almost every single night at my girlfriend's house who has a beautiful guest room for me. <laughs> she and I have been friends for years. We're having the best time, you know, just with these sleepovers. And we just party. I mean, it's actually we're being really bad influence on influences on ourselves. We're literally like, just like having sleepovers and staying up and drinking and smoking and, you know, going, having, a good, old yeah, having a good time. Yeah. But you need that right now. Oh, it's so totally. It's so when you fun. go back to the house. Cause mm -hmm. obviously you need to get your stuff. Yeah. 
Um, is it where you walk by each other and you feel that cold breeze and you yeah, don't it's talk? Very, it's very awkward. It's not fun. And, you know, we're trying to be amicable, but yeah, it's just, I really try not to be there a lot. Um, but I, I have got a house I've been, um, I've got a, I, I am ready to move into another house that, um, I have a guy, you know, painting and I'm like, come on, like, we've got to get this house finished so I can start moving in. So really I've got a lot of packing to do right now. That's what I'm going to be doing all weekend. And, um, you know, move, just moving on. It's funny. Like you were just talking about insurance. Like that's the big thing for me too, is I'm going to be going to get my own insurance policy. So I'm being fired in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I would get. And I'm sure it's going to be crappy and expensive. That moment, that moment when you go home in that coldness, I believe that's referred to as the third phase of a marriage. And that's hallway sex when you pass each other and you say, fuck you. And he says, fuck you. <laughs> that's called hallway yeah. sex. No, you know, not even. <laughs> but, you know, we waited. We, you know, we, our kids are in college. Like we don't have little kids anymore. And kind of waited and um they don't see anything which is great so you know you're welcome kids are they That's siding uh, are they trapped in any way um where they you're not talking I, I assume you're not talking poorly and vice versa right no 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 one's bashing like no 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 that yes so chances sure. are you mutual sorry was this mutual this divorce? yes totally mutual this we Nobody both want yes any- Okay. No one did anything to each other. This is just two people who parented well, raised two great kids, found that once the kids left, they had nothing in common anymore. Okay. And because they the kids are so independent, even before college. And, you know, they're they're with their friends all the time. They just don't need us anymore. He and I are just like, Ew, like we're not having fun anymore. You know, we don't have baseball games to go to anymore. Um, we actually even tried, we bought um, season tickets for, to the Tigers and thought maybe, okay, so now we're not taking the boys, we're not going to their baseball games anymore. That didn't work. So we, tr- you know, we tried, but it's like, it's time. Chapter two, we're both going to move on and still parent well and be, I hope we can be good friends. I think and you will be. I, I think, I, I hope so. I assume from a mutual standpoint, if I went through a horrible type divorce okay so, and i still managed to maintain civility and never never really bash i mean i've been obviously through my books and stuff like that um my kids are well aware but my kids also are well aware of the truth anyway you know they know my ex-wife unfortunately passed away last year but it's um, they're aware what their mother was and who she was and stuff, but to the civility, what I regret, I think, and I write about this in my new book that's coming out. I regretted that I didn't do more for my ex-wife. I should have been man enough to put aside the, the differences and allow myself to help her more because I believe she was asking for help without asking for help by acting out and stuff. Mm. And that's where my guilt lies. And I got to, I was the lucky one. I got to spend the final six hours with her. Well, she was already passed on, but I was there for waiting for the coroner. And, you know, I I've mentioned this before. My kids have asked me what, I have done what what did I do <laughs> for six hours and stuff? And my answer is always I was finally able to have a conversation with your fucking mother without her fucking opinion. <laughs> so that was that was <laughs> but that's how I deflect. I deflect all my pain with comedy. So hopefully you could appreciate it a little. But I think you'll be fine in the end. Yeah. It sounds like you're both mature enough and understand mm-hmm. from a mutual respect that the kids matter. And totally. they don't need to be you'll I think you'll be fine at the weddings. You'll be fine meeting new significant others. You'll be rooting for him. And hopefully he's rooting for you. Yeah, because those next significant others matter for the kids. Totally. Oh, gosh. I I if I were ever to write a book, it would be about uh, step parents. I've, I've got such opinions because I am a redheaded stepchild. I ha- I grew up with a stepfather and a stepmother and 
I'm not a huge fan of that. And I don't think I would ever want to be anyone's stepmom. Yeah, you will be. You will be. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe you'll have new kids. That's always exciting. Maybe I'll have like new new babies. Yeah, why not? I might, we might want to bring my OBGYN and she might disagree with you. <laughs> Shut that factory down. Yes, please. Factory I know I down. look young, but. Another benefit to dating 50 plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bam. But uh, it is a shit show out there. <laughs> it's a shit show. Marriage is a shit show for all intents and purposes. Yeah. I had step parent. I have step parents. Uh, luckily my stepmother is my mother passed a while ago but my stepmother is i i don't even call her stepmother i call her my mother even though my mother was amazing she's amazing as well because she didn't step on our toes and she never separated that part of she treated us as equal as if her own kids and she has her own kids so stepfather we could probably talk about mm -hmm. in another book, but that's a whole different story. I've, yeah. I've gotten past it. So you grew up and still reside in same area. Yes. My kids went to my middle school. My kids went to my high school. Did they have any sim similar teachers? They had, there was a chemistry teacher or science teacher that I had in sixth grade when he started as a young 20 something. And then my oldest had him as he was getting ready to retire. And um, he was the same piece of shit. That I, <laughs> I just, and I said to him, don't tell him that who your mom is. Cause I was not nice to him. <laughs> I was an obnoxious middle school student. So was Did tell him? <laughs> what? Telling him? I didn't hear that. Did he tell him? No, no. He never My, did. No, because I raised two students. Smart. I got one at U University of Michigan. I got one at Michigan State. They're engineers. They're very bright. They're straight A's. They are very competitive. They were such the opposite of their parents. Their dad and I were not great middle school and high. We were obnoxious class clowns. We were in detention and in trouble. And uh, <laughs> I literally raised them to be the opposite. So no, he was like, I do not want him to know that you're my mom. And I'm like, exactly. How did you, how do you deal with, I mean, you just said your kids are completely opposite and nothing could be more opposite than Michigan State and Michigan to <laughs> a huge rivalry. Yeah. And um, regarded at both great universities. Yeah. Um, the, the Is that an argument? With it's, that? it's brand new. So the youngest just went in September or the end of August. He moved in. Um, Michigan State doesn't have a great football team right now. So we're not talking about it. And um the um they're they're never together but they've always been rivals i mean i the youngest we got got him a guitar when he was young put him in guitar he's a phenomenal guitarist so the older one comes home one day and he's like i'm gonna be a better guitarist than you picks up the guitar sits down with youtube starts teaching himself takes some lessons and now he's a great guitarist and he did <laughs> it just to piss the younger one off that's great i like they him. they are funny they're they've got but they've got my personality. They're hilarious and they do banter. Um, and I'm watching them become like friends more, but they are separated. They're not that close by being so far apart at their colleges. But um, it'll be interesting to see them at Thanksgiving How when do you, we're well, all together. Yeah, on Thanksgiving when they mm -hmm. think you wake up and get gifts. I also read about that. Right. <laughs> you're, right? you're good. Yes, I did write that <laughs> yeah. because they are... That's, you know, they're, they're just little greedy little children. All they wanted was holidays where they got gifts and they would refuse to come out of their rooms on Thanksgiving because Turkey's grouse and they wanted their gifts. And <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. They yeah. were Thanksgiving was my favorite holiday and they hated it because they thought the food was gross when they were little and they wanted presents. Yeah. Greedy little boys. Greedy little boys. Well, <laughs> that's what you get. You wanted to mix the Jews and the Catholics together, and there you go. Cashews. Now, that's right. And now they get all the holidays. They got everything. 
That's perfect. And that's why Thanksgiving was my favorite holiday because that was the one holiday that their father and I both celebrated growing up that we had in common. So I insisted on always having Thanksgiving at our house and we, it was amazing. What was it like? What was it like? um, Did you have any difficulty telling your parents you were going to marry a Catholic? Not at all. Like that? No, no. Is yeah. that a common problem? Is there a problem in it in some households? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty of parents. I have friends whose parents would they, they wouldn't even think about that. But I mean, my personality, I, no one tells me what to do. My parents know that. No one's going to tell Mercy what to do. We're not very religious. I did. I we grew up. Um, you know, it was like Jew Judaism light. <laughs> we did very <laughs> little. Um, and then as I got older, and then I did even less and less and less. So it never ever um mattered to me and then my husband wasn't religious at all either i mean he we yeah i mean the we were consu- we're consumers christmas i i love the all the lights i loved our tree and i loved all i would go out and buy everything well gnomes and more lights and everything and decorate the house because because i'm a consumer and we get all the presents and we you know i just think it's fun but no religion you know, I hated wasn't. Christmas. I hate Christmas. I love it. I hate Christmas. I date someone that loves Christmas, who now is kind of demanding that I get a tree this year. Yeah. And demanding that I light up my house and all this stuff, the things I've never dealt with. Now, I'm going to assume she's probably correct because I should start to love holidays more. I I am not good at how ho- my Christmas is probably what you would be considered a Jewish Christmas. I go eat Chinese food and I go to the movies. That's awesome. Myself, I don't spend time with any, I don't take any invites. My kids invite me to their significant others' houses. I won't Mm -hmm. go, but that's because I was brought up between divorced parents, bouncing house to house to house to house. Every other year, start here, then start here. Start Everything was split, split. And you never knew what you were getting. You never, the new kids, oh, I, I talk about this in the new book, the, both my parents remarried and both had a daughter. Mm. So I have, a, I have two sisters that are not sisters. They're not related at all, but they're my sisters. But you're half sisters. But they became, you the know, favorite. well, I had to sit there and watch them open gifts mm-hmm. because their parents were present. Because you were the redheaded stepchild, just That's like right. me. I was just. Hey, just so you know, I literally am a redheaded stepchild. Hello. I've got red hair too, but it's just really wet right now because I worked out and was running really late to this. So my no, hair's wet. That's a that's a wig Mel's wearing. I'm not <laughs> a wig. You have beautiful hair, Mel. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Yeah, just what you need. More compliments. <laughs> Me and Mel, me and Mel went to school together too, from seventh grade on. Oh, okay. I was going to ask how you guys know each other. Yeah, that's it. Though, with no sexual activity, no touching, no, we never even. Yeah, she's like, eh, you know. I look at her and I go, eh, you know, whatever. He made fun of me, but he made fun of everybody. So Mm -hmm. that's my I love yous. All my I love yous come with a backhand, and it's usually making fun of you. If I'm not talking to you. I do not like you. That's <laughs> this is true. Well, not- I hope that you embrace Christmas for your yeah. new woman in your life because um, that's what you do if that's what she wants. Yeah, I probably will. The hardest day to embrace is Father's Day. Mm-hmm. I am horrible. So I recently changed. I used to not even allow my kids to gift me anything on Father's Day. And this is all trauma based. This is complete trauma bullshit where I dragged my life into their life because of my oldest daughter, who I don't have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. I self punished myself and won't allow myself to be called a father. How think of the mental fuck up wrapped around all that shit, how I even think it out like where well, are you really a good father? Is it a father's day if you have a child that doesn't even talk to you? And I have to drag my other kids into that. If they, they know, don't give me a card. Don't, don't even say it. Don't. 
it's the most fucked up thing I probably did as a parent. Agree? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Agree? I do. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have a child that you don't have a relationship with her right now. Yeah, my old oldest daughter, who's 30, um, she's 35, I think. And she's, she's in Marcy's dating age. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Maybe she could hook you up. But yeah, I don't have a relationship with her. And it's not, I'm not fault, just like the job thing. I'm not faultless, but I'm also not guilty of some of the things that I'm being. Basically, I was a kid. I was just a child when I had her. One night stand, never knew the girl, the mother or anything. Nine months later, I'm in a courtroom with other men taking not DNA. There was no DNA back then taking a blood test. So I was 18. I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to be a parent. And I had just gotten, I was just getting married, you know, very soon having kids of my own, you know, and stuff. And it just spiraled from there, but I still talk to her. I, I talk to her. I talk to her. She don't talk to me. In other words, she gets a Facebook message every month <laughs> type of thing you know, of me checking in and making sure she has my phone number and any information she needs. Fred, does she respond to you? Not one bit. Not at all. Not at all. But she doesn't block me. Okay. So, um, it's, it's there. She has a relationship with my other children. That's fine. Okay. That's fine-ish. Her and Riley, my youngest daughter, aren't necessarily on the same page all the time because in Riley's eyes, I'm the best thing since sliced fucking bread, you know, but in my older daughter's eyes, I'm a piece of shit. So that's something, isn't this weird how I could flip the show from funny shit right to fucking serious shit? And that's the whole show basically (laughs) is just us bullshitting about life life shit. but it's good to be these things do make it better for me because basically you two become a therapist almost i'm able to tell you the story and anybody listening and be honest about something only makes it better usually by talking about it and stuff and Usually I make jokes about it, but in that instance, I usually don't joke because it is quite heartbreaking to know you have grandchildren that you could never see. And the hardest part is her ex-husband, my daughter's ex-husband is from the town I live in. My daughter lives in Georgia, but during the summer, I was actually standing right behind my grandchild and I'm not allowed to say anything. Hmm. That, that hurt. That was hurt. hurt. That was hurtful. That was, but it's also being respectful. I'm respecting her wishes. Nothing good could come out of me fucking up that grandchild's life too. She knows nothing about me. She might even think I'm dead for all I know. I don't know what's been told. I met her once, but I wasn't allowed to say who I was when I met her. But it's it's crazy. It's a it's one of the most difficult things I've dealt with. But at the same time, it's nice that I still have I'm alive and I still have plenty of time to continue to work on it. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm a giant fuck up sometimes. I got a lot of trauma, a lot of trauma. Oh, we all do, Fred. Yeah, let's talk about yours. Let's talk about your trauma. Me? You yeah, you're not, as oh. open. you're not as open as I am. No, I kind of keep it all. It's called bravery. You're not as brave as I oh, am. Oh, please. I'm in the dating world. Come on. I'm brave. <laughs> yeah, that's brave enough. So, Marcy, what yes. else are you... Are you performing anytime soon? No, I am not performing anytime soon. Um, I have no plans whatsoever, but um, I would have to sit down and write some new new material. 
Um, I was on stage almost a year ago with the last time, and I did have some pretty good material there, which is where I had the whole dad bod thing. But um, I will add, of course, my new life, things that I'm learning now as, while going through divorce. Um, and I'll write some new material and I'll probably, uh, I'll probably get back on stage. Like I said, before the end of the year, what's your, what's your process for writing a joke? How's it start and end? What's my process? Well, I mean, I do a lot of, you know, chit chatting with people and funny things come to mind where I write a lot of stuff down. I've got a, I've got a whole list of scenarios of things or things that I've said where I'm like, you know what, that's a really good joke. Um, I mean, I'm just bring up some notes right now, but, um, I don't know. I don't really have, you know, I just, I just think I just sit down. If I decide that I'm going to have a writing session, I just sit down and, and look at my notes and, and think of different scenarios and try and come up with something like that Cheech and Chong joke. I was literally just sitting with a piece of paper and a pen, you know, like I need a joke. I need a joke. I need a joke and wrote that Cheech and Chong joke. Um, then I wrote another joke. Um, so maybe when I wrote that Cheech and Chong joke, I probably wrote about five good jokes during that writing session for that. Now, show. do they go, do they go through consistent re-edits and the way you verb it and the way you use yeah, it? Yeah, well, that's, I, I would be a good, good comedian if I did that, but I, I was <laughs> never a great, I never, I, I wasn't getting on stage consistently. I mean, listen, I was never a huge fan of the hours, um, I was like, uh, you know, my husband's like, are we watching Game of Thrones tonight? I'm like, I gotta be on stage at 1030, you know, 45 minutes away. So, you know, and I had these little kids at home and, and I already have two jobs. So I, I didn't really get into it. Although I was pretty decent at it. Yeah. I've got some funny things to say. What about writing in general? Since I'm, I'm an author, is uh -huh. it something that want that you would like to do? I would love, I, I would love to write. I'm a pretty good creative writer. I would, I have such two amazing ideas for a screenplay. I have the hardest time writing dialogue. Um, I wish I could just sit down and, 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 and start writing. Um, sometimes I, I think about how I should just write for, um, another comedian if I don't really like getting on the stage that much, but you know, you should write feminine jokes for Jeff, make Jeff tell him. I don't think Jeff's that Jeff's done getting on stage. I know he hasn't been, he's so busy. I mean, I think people underestimate how hard it is to produce a show. Oh yeah. He's and stuff. He's got hours of, of interviews that he still, I'm sure needs to edit. Oh, he, and plus Mel, like Mel, for instance, Mel has no idea. Mel just shows up when I tell her to show up. She just signs off and then she goes and watches soap operas, primps her hair. Yeah. Something. That's what I do. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, I have That's what I do when I'm crossing the streams. I just show up. Right. And I got to edit and I've got to, you know, do all these horrible, horrible things. And, right. and she just wants to know if she looked good. That's what did I, <laughs> she never says, did I sound good? She says, did I look good? And because I, I I feel like obviously we sound good. Yeah, and she used to have Mel had a severe case of um, RBF, uh, the re resting bitch face. Oh Lord! Yeah, it's. I, I didn't that. know I had that. That was I, something I found out when I started the show. Apparently, yeah, she I didn't know that she has. I think you know, I might have seen that. Did you call that out? Did you say that? I think I I did watch yes, a little bit did. of your show. Yeah, and I think yes. I saw you say that. I've called it out a few times. And, okay. Oh, many times. Many. Probably. Yeah, I'm trying to change it, you know. I, I try really hard to make sure that I'm not. Howdy. <laughs> I don't even know how I do it and I do it. That's when I flash the logo over her face, you know, whenever the face drops, I just go bang, logo. Wow. You know, subscribe now, you know, but. Awful. Okay. In, Brad, boo. In closing. First of all, we didn't get to this. What type of who is your dream guy? Mark? Me? Yeah. Your dream guy. Who's that guy? Famous, non-famous, wh whoever. What do you what do you want? I mean, tall, dark and handsome, rich, knows how to drive a boat, enjoys 
um, the same things that I do. Good music, music I've heard of my age, <laughs> um, you know, that the, the dream guy. Yeah, that's a dream. That's yeah. a dream because that's that, a guy, dream. that guy doesn't that, exist. That guy, he doesn't exist. If he's rich, he's never been married or he doesn't like women. And <laughs> it's, if he has a boat, he's not going to love you because he already loves his boat. And then he won't have any money because the minute you have a boat, you do not have money anymore. And your dream is dead. I just yeah. lost your dream. Listen, and by the way, yeah. if they are rich, they've got 20,000 women hanging all over them. So they'll never be faithful and honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, if I they know. have a boat. There's always people around. So you'll never have any private so time. Let me analyze this a little. Let me dig a little deep into this. Tall, dark and handsome. Tall. Why tall? What, what does height have to do with anything realistically? Does it make the penis any bigger? By the way, this is a bone of contention for Fred. He he has a I'm height. height I'm height deficient. I'm height He's deficient. Height deficient so. How tall are you, Fred? Five seven. So that means you're five six. Okay, got it. Um, <laughs> she knows. <laughs> I'm five seven. I am five seven, legitimately. Okay, so that's gonna be it. This is my friend Marcy. Marcy, Marcy, <laughs> Marcy. She's a new friend, and she's been introduced to the world of fuckery by me. And we enjoy the same movies or don't enjoy the same movies. Have you seen anything else that you can recommend that was good? Well, I know I, I just bought tickets to see the new Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Um, it's only one night only on the 20th because it's going right to Apple, I believe, from there. Oh, okay. The so new- you want to see it in the theater? Yeah, yeah. I have to see it in the theater. Got it. I have to. It's if it's Martin Scorsese, I need to see the big screen. I need to see the depth and, okay. and the width. I don't what movie is it? Remind me that what is coming out for the the one about the oil fields and the Indians and all this stuff. It's called okay. I can't even think of the whole title. You already bought tickets. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm for the twentieth. I'm in it. I'm in it. But there's plenty of good movies out there. It depends on your taste and stuff. I'm a John Hughes guy. Ah, That's where I go. I go to John Hughes, which I'm very unhappy that um, what's her name? Molly Ringwald recently has come out and is not. I get it, I suppose, because she has children who are now seeing Breakfast Club. What would she say? She came out and talked kind of negatively about this, the storyline back then. Mm. I hate that. I hate that people drag the past into the future and stuff. I get that it's not acceptable to. There's a fat girl name. Right. That stuff like that. But her biggest concern was when Bender is hiding under the desk. And even though they don't show it, he clearly puts his hand up her skirt because she reacts to it. Doesn't he put his face? He puts his face in between her legs, doesn't he? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And she's concerned about that. And she's coming out about that. John Hughes is dead. Let's not talk ill of the guy. The man made amazing films yeah. for the time. We recognize we're all human beings. We recognize it wouldn't fit today. You can't just, you know, show a girl's panties in the boys locker room. It's all over. But okay, Marcy, I thank you. Mel probably doesn't thank you, but I thank you for coming on the show. Yes. Mel, thank Mel. you for having me. Mel Marcy, Mel. I thank you and I really enjoyed chatting with you. Oh, thank you. It was a great to meet you. I enjoyed talking with you too, Mel. Oh, I oh, wish oh. you so much luck in dating and I, I really want to see that clip on the dad body. Oh, yes. I will send that to you. Yes, what a bunch you. of bullshit. You're all, you're so bullshit, Mel. Well, Mel, how am I going to find you? Am I going to, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to face, I'll Facebook you, like Fred Facebook me. Yes, yes. And RBM. then um, I can send it to your messenger. Go to resting bit space. Yeah, I was gonna. No, RBF. That actually would be a good. Uh... RBF.com. <laughs> that's where she is. Okay, everybody, this is a dude in the end house. I'm the dude, Fred Carroll. That's Mel. This is our friend, Marcy. You could never see her perform because she doesn't perform. And go to YouTube because I'll share her first video that she ever produced. And. Go make some latka or whatever you call that stuff. 
because uh, I'll put it in the show notes. Marcy's famous latka. Oh my god. That's what it is. Okay, everybody, we'll talk to you next week. If nobody has told you they love you, we love you. We'll see you again soon. Good. 